Since the fall of man, a war has raged between good and evil. Over the centuries, this war has distorted the truth. Now the truth is perceived as lies, and lies acknowledged as truth. To this day, the battle continues as we investigate and debate the truth behind the history and mystery of the universe. We are Paratruth Radio. Some say it couldn't be done. Others said success is out of reach. Yes, we've met some outstanding goals in our eight years of podcasting, as well as many failures. But here we stand, eight years later, celebrating the second anniversary of the monster that was born from defeat and exhaustion. Today we celebrate the second birthday of Paratruth Radio. Now Paratruth presents their second para birthday. What's up, Para fans? Welcome to a brand new episode of Paratruth Radio. My name is Eric. And I'm Justin. And today, we are celebrating Pure Truth Radio's second anniversary. First and foremost, I just want to take a, make a, I should not take a, but make a quick shout out to all the dads that are tuning in today because today is Father's Day. So happy Father's Day to all of you very lucky and I'm sure very exhausted fathers <laughs> who have to deal with the little pipsqueaks called children. And even though looking I'm for me and an adult, <laughs> film squeaks. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, here we are, brand new week, celebrating the second anniversary. Who would have thought? Second anniversary of Paratruth Radio. You know, eight years ago, there I could not have I could not have told you eight years ago that we'd still be doing podcasting eight years <laughs> later. Yeah. And. Uh, being successful as well you know I, I think success all depends on how you measure it right. you know yeah. some people will measure it on a large scale some measure it on a very small one you know and I think the simple fact that you and I have spent the last eight years meeting our goals step by step and not really focused on the broad picture yeah has helped us in just following that artistic path that leads us in the way it wants to lead us. Uh, I think, you know, I don't, I don't know if that works for everybody, but for you and I, I think it was great because it allowed us to come up with things on a whim, to be very creative, to not worry about, you know, I know we've thought about what we wanted in the future, but that wasn't our main focus. Our focus was on here and now, what are we talking about and who are we talking to? And whoever we had, no matter if it was one person, two people, like at the beginning when it all started, yeah. or the hundreds and even thousands that we have now, we've always remained focused on those people. So first and foremost, I'm just going to say it. Justin, congratulations, man, on the second anniversary of Paratruth Radio. Same to you, my good sir. Uh, it's it's been, been a rough eight years, many ups <laughs> yeah. and downs. Yeah. I was going to say, it, I, I mean, eight years and with this current uh, rendition where we're at now, uh, did I see us doing it for two years? Sure. Did I see us on iHeartRadio or doing video for YouTube? No. I, I mean, it was strictly worrying about just making sure we were on air on time every week and, and making sure we had good content. And you guys can say yay or nay on the good content, but uh, I particularly have, have liked most of our shows. There have probably been one or two where it's kind of like, yeah, we were kind of stretching and, and uh, trying to keep a length of an hour where we, we were finally like, you know what, we're going to have to stop early because there's really not much on something. So I think it's been 
great mm-hmm. so far and yeah, it's, I mean, it's and <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, I think back. I don't think this is a good time to just reminisce a little bit. Uh, you know, I think back to when it all started back in 2008, December, I believe, 2008. Maybe it's fall. I can't. I think it was December. It though. was no, like November, um, December area where we had kind of officially got the okay. the ball rolling. Right, right. You know, when we first started, we were doing two hour shows, sometimes a little over two hours. And it was fun. It was great. You know, we did it Saturday nights. That's when we started. We just spend the whole night relaxing, doing whatever. I think we did something like 10 to midnight or something like that, typically. Something. Uh, yeah. Sometimes we go over the, that and go really late. Uh, and it was fun, but it got exhausting. Yeah. Two hours is a long time for a podcast, depending on what that podcast is, of course. And I think those first couple of years are probably we met some of our some of our biggest defeats. Uh, starting right off with episode one, with the just gibberish that came out of it, because quite frankly, no one could hear what we were saying. Yeah, we didn't know how to work audio. We didn't know how to do a podcast. We didn't know how to talk. Uh, we did a lot of uh and um and and uh and that right there that's how it was you know meant to be there um <laughs> there's a lot of that a whole lot of that and the only people we had tuning in were family for the for the majority yeah. of course we had a couple of people here and there but most of them were not jobs <laughs> uh not saying we're any better but you know if you telling you folks if you knew what we went through that first the first few months let alone that first year some some wacky people out there uh <laughs> If you didn't know already by watching the news, <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I think there's even more you know, accurate people that, that would listen to the show and then call in compared to. <laughs> well, and that's what I'm that, that's what I'm thinking right now. That, that's exactly what I was kind of leaning toward. Uh, I didn't want to get into you know we're not going to get into who called in and what was spoken, but it was an interesting time to say the, yeah. the least. Um, and then we moved on, you know, we went from Nice Talkers, you went off to, uh, uh, I'm not going to name, like, who we were working with or for, but the shows, you know, I think you went on to do Parasite Radio then. Right. Uh, I kept Nice Talkers going for about a, almost five months or so before finally turning it into Forgotten Truth Radio. Then you and I both take, took a nice little hiatus. Uh, about what is it? About a year or maybe two almost that we took off. Um, it was it was probably like a year and a half or so, yeah, because it was getting into that uh, mm-hmm. 2012 area that we finally kind of stopped because I remember all the different shows with the 2012 phenomena and all that, and it leading you know all that stuff leading up to mm-hmm. December 21st, 2012. Right, right. And then I got that that text message from you after that year and a half break. Yeah. I believe it was like May (laughs) uh, of whatever year that was, two years ago, 2013, I believe. 14. Or was it? It would have been 14, yeah. Okay. And, of course, you wanted to start a radio show. (laughs) And I was hesitant at first in my mind, but, you know, I was like, yeah, okay. If it doesn't work out, it'll just turn out like the rest of them. Just walk away, and that's that. However, here we are two years later, and it is fun. We're doing new things. We're trying new things. We know what we're doing now, which is always a good thing. After eight years, I would hope we knew what we were doing. I think there's... I mean, on occasion, we don't know what we're doing. (laughs) There's always room to grow, let's put it that way. (laughs) Uh, But, you know... It is here, two years in, and I don't think either you or I could have asked for a better episode, or show, I mean, uh, to have under our wings, to uh, build, create, and ultimately drive through this culture that is known as the paranormal. Yeah. Met some interesting people, some awesome friends, uh, which you and I never really had, you know, right. the last six the, the first six years uh so it's, it's pretty cool you know you kind of let god uh 
steer the wheel and you're amazed at what he does. Uh, and I'll be honest, there are times that we don't let God steer and then that's when things start to go to crap. So on occasion, you know, obviously God allows us to do things and we're successful on our own, but I don't think we really would be where we are today if we didn't choose to do the type of show that we're doing currently right. now, yeah. in which there is a biblical base and, you know, we we're just staying true to ourselves and to God and just we're thinking mostly that's that's really what we're doing is thinking yeah. this time well i mean and listening you cannot apply all of the that to any facet of your life you know i as you said we always try and take the wheel but when we're taking the wheel it doesn't always end up as the way it's supposed to because we're choosing that free will to go a different route than what is kind of intended and I'm kind of learning that more and more and as I let go of those reins in this particular part of my life I'm starting to feel better about where things are going both with the show and oh yeah regular life absolutely so <clears throat> I, I think that uh, this incarnation that we've got now is a very strong one for sure mm-hmm. well and with that said we do have a pretty fun show today. You know, we actually do have a show today, folks. It's not just talking about how awesome and unawesome <laughs> our past eight years have been yeah. on podcasting. But uh, we do have a little something planned. It is going to be a little fun, a little goofy, nothing too crazy. We will not most likely really be focusing on a particular topic. Although, you know, with, with our rabbit trails, we may come across one or two things you might want to discuss a little bit. But uh, I think the first thing that we're going to go ahead and get into, and we might as well do it now because it's at the beginning of the show. Let's get everyone calm and relaxed and just enjoy it. Uh, we took the time, uh, which isn't actually doesn't take much time anymore because we have Facebook and the Internet and stuff. So, you know, we didn't really take time, but we took like a minute or two to ask a couple of our friends if they would please send us uh, – just a small message or an email of some of their greatest fears that we would be allowed to share online and then around the show and then discuss it between just Justin and I. Uh, and I'm actually very interested to see how legit some of these fears are, if there's any that are not so legit. You know, certain people can be goofballs. But um, let's go ahead and get right into that. I'm going to let you choose, Justin, on who you want to share first. Uh, and we'll discuss it. Well, since you brought up goofballs, we might as well start with the goofballs. Okay. Uh, this will be from Scott and Heidi from Talk Supernatural. All right, Scott. It is Paratruth Radio's two-year anniversary. What? I know. Our good friends Eric and Justin have... They're two years old now? Yeah. <laughs> All right. But yeah, two years they've been on the two air. Two years. Yeah, hey, happy good. anniversary. Yeah, happy, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy, happy, happy anniversary. It's not. Okay. Um, so they want to know what is a, um, a fear or a hesitation that we had regarding oh. podcasting. We we're only a little over a year old ourselves. Yeah. So what? I, I definitely had some. You did. I did. And right. I, I've I've gotten through them. Are you ready to share um, it publicly? Well, I guess at this point now that I've kind of went over that hurdle on that fence, I can. Okay. I can. One is I I was like. I remember the first one I did. I'm like, what am I going to wear? Oh, yeah. I mean, how am I going to appear to the people that are listening to me? I mean, do I wear my hat? Do I not wear my hat? Do I wear T-shirts? Do I it's look important professional? important when you're podcasting. Do you look professional? Yeah. I mean, I mean, the pants, the shirt, the shoes, ties. I mean, is that too much? <laughs> um, what about how I smell? Oh. I mean, I don't want to be offensive to the listeners. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, and you certainly don't do that. Yeah, so... so I don't know. How about you? You got over it, though. I, I did. I did. I'm, you just don't wear it any clothes a year at all. Though. You just do it naked. Well, yeah. I'm naked and I'm afraid. <laughs> but I'm not afraid anymore. I've gotten past that hurdle. So I'm just plain naked. Oh, and that works for you. That works. You're over the fear. And the listeners love it. Uh, yeah. And you? How about you? I love it, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, a fear I had, I just, I wanted people to like me. And I wanted, I wanted okay. you guys to like me a lot. And I was afraid you wouldn't, and so it's okay. It's okay. All right, 
So that was a fear. And but then I met Eric and Justin and they were good friends and they said, Heidi, it's okay if you're ugly. Heidi, it's okay if you're stupid. Just just keep talking. Yeah. And okay. keep talking okay. about stupid stuff and people will listen. And they gave me encouragement. They did. They did. They did. They brought us a long ways. And I want to thank you, Eric and Justin, for being so dang cool. Yeah. Oh. Cool as a fire in a hot day. Cool as a fire in a hot day. Yeah. yeah. So those are our They're fears. Great. They're great. <laughs> I was afraid that people weren't going to like us. That was an yeah, actual I, fear. Yeah. So. Yeah. But some people don't. And you know what? They're just as fun as the people that do. So that's, that's it. it for us. That's it. That's Happy our- anniversary, you guys. We love you. Bye. Keep fighting the good fight. So that was Scott and Heidi from Talk Super. And I don't think there's a single word that comes out of, out of their mouths that doesn't make me laugh. <laughs> I don't know why. It can be like a serious comment, too, and I still kind of chuckle for some reason. I don't know why. But uh, we love you guys, too. Uh, thank you for for uh, celebrating with us and sending in uh, your fear, your fear, discussing it with us. Uh, a couple of things about that actually, because it's actually it's interesting because what Scott was saying about uh, how you look and this and that. Typically, it's not something that you worry about on podcasting. No. And then yeah, and then you had this wonderful idea several months ago to start making YouTube to make a YouTube channel and then start appearing on our podcast <laughs> and suddenly guess what we actually do have to worry about how we appear yeah. and I, it's just, you know it's, not, it's like mm, I don't know <laughs> I definitely I don't think I would have been able to do it right off the bat you know no. when we first started trying to get on YouTube and you know you could just listen to how we sounded you could tell the nerves are there but actually appearing in front of people no. Yeah. No. Well, it, as you said, I think it was a couple months ago now, uh, we, we tried doing video with Night Stalkers and it failed miserably because we were trying to do two things at once. Uh, and it, it was a good learning experience, but, you know, at that time, too, I don't think YouTube had the live feeds yet. They were just pre-recorded videos and that sort of thing where now it is a live, you can do live feeds just like you can do live podcasts. Uh, are they, do they turn out any better or worse? Not necessarily, but that option is there now. Right. Well, I, mean, I think, you know, it's only been eight years, but a lot has happened in eight years. And as you're saying, you know, just technology in and of itself uh, has had a huge upbringing lately. And, what you know, just so you said, what we're capable of doing now, we were not capable of eight years ago. And trying to, and yeah, sure, people did it back then, but trying to podcast and do the video feed for us just starting out was an extremely difficult process. Yeah. And I remember we used to have like a whole scene set up behind us to try to, you know, liven up the show a little bit and give people something to see. It just wasn't working out. Plus the feed was much worse back then. It wasn't as clear a video. Um, so you couldn't see our beautiful faces as you can now. <laughs> and I think one of my favorite props, which again, you'd brought up before was the, the guitar uh case that looked like a casket and Mm -hmm. uh i to this day will never forget that particular prop but it's prop yeah (laughs) so i mean we were trying to make it fun and exciting but at the same time it was just too much to concentrate on we were concentrating on the sound issues that we were having on the podcast side we then we would go to the other side to to try and get the video set up or see where it was at see who was watching it it was just too much at once it was it really was uh Another thing that was brought up that Heidi brought up, oh, they both brought it up, because Heidi brought it up, but then, you know, Scott agreed, was the f- just the fear factor that people may not like you. Yeah. And I'm sure that goes through every podcaster's mind at some point. Even the most experienced podcaster who's been in it for 20 plus years probably still has the same fear. Like, you look at actors on TV or in movies, you know, there's so many actors out there who just fear that they're not going to be good enough. They didn't give a strong enough of, of a uh, uh, performance or, you know, are they really going to like this? or going to like that? So on and so forth. It's something that we struggle with as humans. Um, and I think there is an answer for that, especially for some of you young podcasters out there. Uh, the answer is simple. You just 
drive past it. You know, you can worry all day long, but the truth is there's going to be people who like you. There's going to be people who hate you. Uh, and the good thing, though, about those who hate you is they're going to post it online. And a lot of you think, oh, that's a bad thing. You know, we don't want people posting and having it look bad. But guess what? It gets other people to, interested. And they're like, why are they so bad? Why does this person hate them so much? And you get more listeners who actually do end up liking you. So as far as I'm concerned, they're both positives. I'm with Heidi on that. They're both fun. You work with it. Yes, it hurts at times. Yes, it gets under the skin. But you know what? You got to be tough as nails. Drive through and you'll succeed. So don't worry about it. Well, that's something that we actually had a conversation with Jerry about a couple weeks ago where she was having a hater on on a particular episode of her Mm -hmm. show, Tie Girl for God Radio. And it's like, Jerry, and this goes for anybody, you're always going to have the haters. Always. Like, when Eric and I first started with Night Stalkers, I think at first we didn't care about, you know, how many listeners we were going to have and, you know, the comments we were going to have. But as it went on, yes, we did get hate mail. We did get people calling in with stupid things, trying to screw us up. And that particular sense, we had a guest on that one time and they had called in with a very disgusting and disturbing uh, prank, I guess you could call it. And mm-hmm. you're just going to always have them. Is it hard to let some of that stuff go? Sure. But in the long run, if you don't let it slide off your back, just like any type of criticism you get at a normal job, then you're you're going to have knots in your stomach, plain and simple. Right. It's true. Absolutely true. Uh, before we go and move on, I do want to just mention, you know, no one knows because, you know, you, you figure or most figures with with our friends in the podcasting in- industry uh, that you and I just listen to all their shows, which we do. We do. I, however, don't happen to listen the night that they premiere. Right. I don't. In, either, yep. in fact, I don't even happen to listen to them within the same week and sometimes even within the same month, because I got to say, Scott and Heidi, the one thing that helps me get home eight-hour drive back to Cleveland and another eight-hour drive back to Lynchburg is your shows. Literally, I save them all for the day that I'm driving home and I listen to them eight hours straight. And it makes the road trip a lot nicer, I must say. It's fun. It's interesting. If I didn't have <laughs> if I didn't have Talk Supernatural's shows to listen to, episodes to listen to, it's the worst drive in the world. Let me tell you. I've tried listening to some of our stuff. And, you know, I think it's like many actors out there. Like, you think of Johnny Depp who can't watch himself, you know, in any film. So he doesn't watch any of the movies. I can't listen to any of the shows that you and I do. <laughs> I just, I don't like hearing my own voice. <laughs> like, I've already been there, too. It's like, oh, I've done this. I know what happened. Yeah. But, um, you know, interesting stuff. Very fun. <laughs> well, I, I'm... I usually will try and listen to our shows, but if the sound quality is not good, and this goes for any show, really, if the sound quality is not good or if the guest is just not the greatest or the topic I don't agree with, I'll listen to it for a while, and if I just can't get past that, I I mean, I will turn it off. I'm sure a lot of people are that way, but... In the long run, I think that a lot of the people that we've come across have great shows. Do I agree with all of their viewpoints? No. But that's the point of doing the different shows that are out there is everybody's got a viewpoint. Everybody has a right to get it out there if they so choose. So Mm -hmm. if, if you guys like podcasting, if you love podcasting, if you've ever thought about podcasting, as Jim McKinney would attest, I mean... There's a lot of people out there that will help you. I've helped Jim try and get started as much as possible. Jerry has been helping him out as well. And uh, unfortunately, he's been having a, a lot of hurdles to get through, but he does want to start doing it. So I encourage you guys, if you if you think it's for you, if you pray about it, meditate on it, and you're like, yeah, you know, I got to get the word out there, then I say go for it. If it, if it flops, it flops, but you have to try. 
you have mm-hmm. to try. So, uh, before we get too much further into it, I think it'll take us to our first break. Folks, you have been listening to Paratruth Radio right here on the Paratruth Radio Network. We will be right back after Eric's Random Fact of the Day. Now, Eric's Random Fact of the Day. Did you know that there was once a man hit on the head by a falling baby? Twice? According to TodayIFoundOut.com, which, according to Time Magazine, October 17, 1938, the year of the first event was 1937. Joseph Figlock, a local street sweeper in Detroit, Michigan, was walking down the road when a baby fell from a fourth-story window. The baby struck him on the head and shoulders. The tackling toddler was thankfully not killed. However, he and Mr. Figlock were both injured. The following year, another Mother of the Year candidate allowed her two-year-old son David Thomas to fall from a window. Joseph, once again doing his job sweeping out on an alley, was again struck by the tumbling tyke. Remarkably, once again, neither the ankle biter nor the newborn nabber were killed. This was Eric's Random Fact of the Day. All right, folks, welcome back to Paratruth Radio. My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. And we've been celebrating our two year birthday anniversary of Paratruth Radio. And what an amazing ride it has been so far and as eric said at the beginning part of the show i had talked to him i actually had texted him a couple times do you think you want to start a show again do you think you want to start a show again? <laughs> so i finally wore him down enough and <laughs> he literally just wore me down <laughs> <laughs> had somebody who I was starting to talk to and and be interested in for dating, and they're like, "Oh, you should totally do it." And I am now engaged to her, and will be married to her within the next couple weeks. And so I, I texted Eric, and I'm like, "Dude, I'm talking to this girl, and she thinks we should start a show again." And he's like, "Do you really think we're ready?" I said. Ready or not, we might as well try it. So here we are two years later on iHeartRadio doing video for YouTube, and uh, it's been awesome so far. So, yeah. Meanwhile, uh, in the back of my mind the entire time, I'm like, no, not another girl. <laughs> Just be single so we can hang out, man. <laughs> Come home. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't notice that, that I have to come to North Dakota in two weeks. You'll enjoy it. There's a lot of haunted places here. Well, I am going to enjoy that part. <laughs> well, no, I'll enjoy all of it. But I'm mostly going to be there to cause a ruckus. So, Well, did you get the invite for the... <laughs> Uh, you and I need to talk about it later because I have a question. Okay. <laughs> I could ask the question. I could ask it now on the radio while everyone's listening. Well, then everybody's going to be curious. What what, what, would he, what was he asking? Exactly. But you know what? Just like the end of Supernatural and Arrow and The Flash at the end of the season, they be using suspense and hanging until next year. So guess what? You got next about year. six months. <laughs> <laughs> you got six months. <laughs> no, actually, I, I'll go ahead and bring it up. I can actually read every single word quite clearly except for one, and is the one that I need to know to understand the whole thing. And that's the word that begins the letter M or N. But um, is it was uh, mischief. Mischief. Okay. <laughs> See, I could not get. I, there's no way in heck that I would have gotten that on my own because for the last four days it's been bugging my mind. And I told myself, I'm not going to text Justin about it. I'm just going to wait until I talk to him on the radio. <laughs> once, At least once we get on and start, re- you know, before we record. So mischief, that makes sense. And okay, that works. See, I thought it said mayhem. And I was like, except. Actually, you know what? 
It does say I, mayhem. I was right. I was wrong. Yeah, it, it's mayhem. Well, you know what? I think you're both right and wrong because in the word mayhem, there's a dot above the word, which suggests that there's an I in there. And there's no I in mayhem. Right. She spelled it wrong. And I, I, I was even looking at it, and I'm like, what does this say? And she's like, mayhem. And I'm like, there's no I I'm like, you know what? Eric's not going to know how to spell it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to know how to spell it, but he didn't realize I'm not going to know how to read it either. So she's like, <laughs> good job, Shelly. Well, well there, where's the, there's the test. We'll see if he catches it. So apparently well, I, Eric caught it. <laughs> I caught it, but I had no clue what it was saying to me. <laughs> it's like, I know this letter is trying to speak to me, but I don't know how. <laughs> so yeah, okay. she. Yeah. after you said, I'm going to raise hell, I'm like, did you read it? Because it says right in there, bring it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so, oh, it's, it's consider it brought. <laughs> and I have a blast. <laughs> well, and just so you guys know, I'm. we'll bring this up again next or at the end of the show, that uh, we will be doing a live show that week. Whether we're on the road or we're doing it live on, on uh, in the studio here, it will be a live show. So it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, with next week and, and the week after the, the wedding, there will be some shows where it's just guest appearances that we had. So it, we will still be airing something. It just won't be the typical shows that we've been doing. So going back. In other words, it will not be brand spanking new right. from us. Yeah. <laughs> um, so going back into, as Eric said, we did ask some of our friends. You know, what are some of their fears as to podcasting or broadcasting, whatever you want to call it? So next person I've got up here is Jim McKinney, as we were talking, uh, is wanting to start a podcast. So he's got a couple of quick questions for us. This is Jim McKinney from Paranormal Supernatural Activity Radio. Uh, my biggest fear about podcasting would be running out of content or subjects and uh, dead air. Mm-hmm. That'll be it. So running out of content and dead air, what do you think? Okay, so running out of content. You know, nowadays, Justin and I, we really kind of do everything on the fly. Uh, it, just because it, it comes so easily to us now, and I'm not saying that this is something that we're great at. This isn't this isn't something that we're just born with. It took the last eight years for us to be able to come right. just you know know stuff on the fly. Plus, it comes up you know with a lot of knowledge, all the background knowledge that we have now on all the different subjects we've talked about. There's constantly something that we can bring up, and we'll tie it in with other topics. Uh, hence, some of our, of our rabbit trails. So, when you go on those rabbit trails, yes we're drifting away from the actual topic but what it's also doing is allowing us to fill up that time because we know that we're not always going to have a full hour uh you know just strictly talking about this topic and i know it's one thing it's simple for me and justin to do it because there's two of us and jim i don't know if you have a co-host or plan to have a co-host but doing it on your own is a little bit more difficult and so you need to be a little more strategic when doing the the shows and what I used to do, and I think Justin, I know Justin and I both used to do it when we started Night Stalkers, but I used to do it a lot for uh, Forgotten Truth Radio. And I used to write out either a uh, an outline or a timeline of what the show's going to be. I'd say like, you know, at, at 6 o'clock, I'm going to do this. At 6.15, I'm going to bring up this. You know, 6.20, you know, give myself just the right amount of time that I think I'm going to need. And if I tend to, if I happen to either cut that time short then I just continue on to the next thing and at the very end maybe I'll just you know go on talking about the upcoming weeks that, that are you know you see Justin and I do that every single week you know we always leave time at the end because we never have a full hour of just one topic typically so within the last like 15 20 minutes we're just talking and talking about the you know what the future holds for uh, all of the listeners and what they plan what we plan on having them here uh as for dead space, listen, if, now it doesn't happen all the time with us, but there are plenty of times where it has happened. And even now on Paratruth Radio, there's dead there's dead space. You know, it gets quiet. 
And every once in a while, I'll do something like and just make weird noises, right? Because what does it do? It's it's sparks laughter and it's some kind of just weird conversation that finally triggers uh, the creative fluids to continue on to the next, you know, whatever it is we're going to talk about or say. And again, you know, yeah, it's difficult when you're on your own. Um, But the good thing is you can create a little segments like Justin and I have, you know, we got the paranormal headlines and we got the random fact of the week that helps to fill up those gaps. So we don't have to worry as much about dead time. Also, depending on the guest, uh, it's important to have questions ready, you know, right. for the longest time uh, nowadays, you know, we come up, Justin and I come up with maybe two or three questions total <laughs> before a show, but the real questions don't, come into mind until we're actually communicating with our guests because 99.9% of the time any question we had is never going to be asked because the topic just doesn't lead us to it and Justin and I are kind of free flowers you know we don't like scheduling we don't like having everything spot on every single time we'd rather just let the show take us where it wants to take us Uh, and so you know yeah when we're talking to guests it can lead anywhere sometimes we don't even talk about the book sometimes that the guest is on for. You know, we talk about a little bit, but then we drift off and talk about other things because it's not always about talking about the book itself. It's about talking about the author. And it's the author who promotes the book. It's not the book itself that sells. If people are interested in the author or in the producer or the screenwriter or whoever we have on, the more they know about that person, the more they're going to be interested in whatever work they have, uh, typically. And of course, it doesn't work for everybody, but... I know that was a long answer, but I think those are the very critical things that you need to look forward to and just think about uh, before an episode. So, Right. Well, to expand on that, losing content, this is actually something that I've kind of struggled with within the last year, actually. And I had talked to my friend that we had on last week, Jim Mallard, on, and, uh, you know, he, he said... You, you don't always need to stick with the paranormal. Yes, that's your show. That's the niche that you're in. But Eric and I have done uh, screenwriters. You know, in the past, we've done shows with authors that have done fiction writing. And mm-hmm. you, you can expand even further than, than the paranormal. Do you want to drift so far that it's not a paranormal show anymore, but that's where you're, you know, you're starting it out? No. Kind of mix it up. Do one show one week of paranormal. Next week you can do something else or do a couple of weeks of paranormal and then throw in just a, a curveball every once in a while. So there's always content to do. Yeah, I, I completely agree. You know, and of course it depends if you want to do paranormal. I right. mean, if you, if you don't want to do paranormal, then it could be whatever you know, whatever genre you want to you want to go with. You go with that's your main focus. But yeah, taking a step back, giving ourselves a breather because honestly, Justin and I don't. I mean, we love the paranormal, but we don't like talking about it every single week. It starts to, we, we're, we're two people who tend to get bored very easily. Yeah. Uh, if you haven't noticed during some of our shows, we just drift off. Or the but, fact that we've had three other shows prior to the Red Truth Radio. <laughs> the, the Red Truth Radio. But, um, you know, it, it's important to give yourself a breather. I think it's important for uh, your listeners to get a breather as well. Yes, sir, your listeners are going to be interested in the paranormal if your main focus is the paranormal. But you know what? If you fill in some of the gaps with different content, they're going to appreciate that just as much because they're going to learn things and hear things in different ways than what they would have heard naturally. Uh, and being Christians, you know, I think that's extremely important because as a Christian, being in the paranormal community 100% of the time can become difficult and become spiritually draining. So getting a step back and taking that breather is a good time to uh, just escape the reality of what your genre is and what it is that your main focus is. So, you know, in the end, it's really just up to you, man. You know, just be creative, do whatever you feel and uh, have fun with it. That's the most important thing. If you have fun, your listeners will have fun. Yeah. 
And with the dead space thing, too, it, that kind of depends, too, if you're doing a pre-recorded show compared to a live show. Yes. If you're doing a yes. pre-recorded show, you can cut out all that dead space so long as it works together. Like, if you <laughs> asked a question and the person answered it and then there's five to ten seconds of dead space and it just doesn't flow by editing it, just leave it and there's just dead space. If you're doing a live show, as Eric said, it's much easier to do a live show with a co-host because then there shouldn't be dead space. But, again, when Eric and I first started, there was a lot of numerous amounts of dead space. Yeah. Uh, And we were doing live shows and it was like... Honestly, that's probably why we didn't have very many listeners to begin with, yeah. because we were just yeah. we were just trying to have fun with things. We weren't trying to really do a show. We were just talking to each other as normally as we would in everyday life. And were we being comedic? Yes. Do we do that in everyday life? Yes. <laughs> it's, it's what we do. So, uh, I... I would say, and a lot of people will say, well, you know, it's a, it's a radio personality. For me and Eric, no. What you see is what you get. We are the exact same people that we are off air as we are on air. We are goofy. We talk about weird crap every day. <laughs> and Literally, it's the kind in the toilet when it spirals funny. <laughs> it's so weird. It just or, doesn't or make sense, colors man. or different textures <laughs> or... Uh, you know the the usual stuff. Uh, this but, conversation starting to stink. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yes, dead space. It, it is generally going to happen again. If you're doing live shows, you just got to get into that groove and make sure there is none. If there's dead space and you're pre-recording, cut it out so long as it flows. I I think that you can have that dead space even without editing it because people will want to know what's coming next. Right. So you know. And on top of that, this is the last thing before, you know, and then we can move on. But on top of that, having friends like Justin, you know, who I know he's been in contact with you a lot. I, not so much. I'm not always in contact with everybody. But even still, both him and I are usually available. So if there's a time where you're doing a show and you have a topic, but you don't have a whole lot of content, feel free to get one of your friends, one of your fellow hosts and ask them, hey, would you mind being a guest co-host with me? And, you know, Justin and I do that all the time. Well, you know, we do that with Jerry. We've done it with Kay. We've done it with Scott and Heidi. We, you know, we've done it with other people as well, Justin Fall. Uh, and we just have fun. We go on. You have somebody else to talk with who may know even a little bit. You know, Justin and I don't know everything. Uh, there's topics that we'll discuss on other shows that we just don't really fully understand or, you know, have the right knowledge for. But simply being there and bringing up the smallest little thing that might, you know, maybe somebody doesn't know something and we just just happen to say, you know, we happen to say something that doesn't really fully make sense to us, but it clicks for somebody else. And they're like, oh, yeah, that reminds me, blah, 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 you know. Uh, so, yeah, you know, we're available. There's always going to be others available, uh, even family. It, you know, you, you never know, whoever. You can get anyone you want to be a guest with you and uh, just have fun. Whatever it is, just have fun. That's, that's the main key. I agree. And on top of being on people's shows... If you ever need guests and can't come up with anything, I'm a firm believer, let's help each other out. So if you if we had a guest on that you're like, oh, I can't find their contact information, I really want to get them on, reach out to your fellow podcasters, and that's to anybody that podcasts. I don't agree on this whole, you know, we're going to do this over here, we don't give a crap about everybody else. I think we should all be in it together, 100%. Mm-hmm. So... All right, so last clip we have here is from Jerry with her fears that she had doing podcasting. Hi, Justin and Eric. I just wanted to say happy two-year anniversary to Paratruth Radio, and thank you so much for having me on board the Paratruth Radio Network train. Choo-choo! Well, to answer your question... These are some of my concerns when I first started podcasting. I would say, number one, my concern was that I didn't know what to talk about for a whole hour. I felt awkward about hearing my own voice, and I 
didn't necessarily want to have my listeners hear my voice talk about a topic for a whole hour. I just didn't want to appear to be droning on and on and on. But now I realize that I prefer interviewing somebody else. That way the listener has a varied experience and not just hearing my voice if they get to hear at least two or three other voices, um, mine and uh, the person I'm interviewing and maybe another person I'm interviewing as well. Uh, I'm actually talking about uh, voices of other people, not not voices from oh, just one person, i.e. me. <laughs> um, the second would be I was concerned about uh, creating controversy and the response I received. I've mainly received positive responses, but once in a while there's somebody who doesn't agree with me or probably, you know, one in a hundred people might say something negative and everything. And uh, sometimes it would get underneath my skin. And, and of course, I would talk to Justin and Eric about it and they would comfort and assuage me and tell me that I'm doing a good job and it's just normal and natural to get people saying negative things once in a while or trolling or what have you. It's just the nature of what we do, that not everyone's going to agree with us and uh, they have every right not to agree with us. And sometimes they might come across as brash or rude or what have you. And, and I just have to take that in stride. So that was another concern I had. A third concern was that I was told that I speak rather rapidly. And I have, believe it or not, slowed down remarkably since I started. Uh, before, people couldn't actually understand me because I would speak at such a rapid pace and I have absolutely just sounded like maybe Bugs Bunny talking or maybe uh, Tasmanian of whatever. I would just speak at such a rapid pace, like Fast and Furious, and nobody could understand what I was saying. So, And I just thought I just could not be myself. But anyway, uh, I realized that uh, I could be myself while talking at a normal conversational pace. So I've had to really discipline myself to slow down and yet be myself. And uh, that was a challenge I had. Uh, but with uh, some discipline and training, I realized that if I just slow down and uh, not be in such a hurry to get what I have out to say, then uh, it's not an issue. <laughs> And lastly, I was concerned about sticking to a schedule. I wasn't sure if I could be able to commit to a show every other week. At first, I was doing a show every week, but then working full-time and having a hubby, uh, I realized that it's better that I just put out a show every other week, uh, every other Wednesday. So at first I was apprehensive about whether I could do that, uh, but now I realize I can. So those were my concerns when I first started podcasting. If you are listening to this and uh, you're considering podcasting, you might have some apprehensions or dread about the whole nature of podcasting about uh, what will people think and do I sound strange when I am broadcasting on air uh, that sort of thing your concerns might be different than mine but maybe yours are similar but anyway if you're thinking about podcasting I highly encourage you to get the message out there and uh, I am more than happy to help you as well as Justin and Eric and uh, we are looking for more podcasters to uh, join the Pear Truth Radio Network train. Choo choo! God bless you, Justin and Eric. Happy second anniversary. <clears throat> Your thoughts? They, yeah, well, let me just begin by saying that, uh, you know, the, everything that Jerry just said was very uh, story like. <laughs> Yeah. Because and I don't mean this in a bad way, Jerry. <laughs> I just mean it because it's funny because you started off with the train and then you ended with the train. <laughs> and it's actually no, it's actually really funny because you know when you're making a movie or especially when you're making a movie, you usually want the end to mimic or mirror the beginning in some way. You want it to come full circle and around. So congratulations, good job, Jerry. That was that actually made me smile. I'm proud of you. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not, I swear I'm not being a jerk. He's actually being he, very sincere. Yeah. I think you know when I'm being a real jerk, but uh, <laughs> maybe you don't. I don't know. Anyway, you know, 
the one thing about Jerry is she was she really was on the struggle bus at the beginning when when she was getting into podcasting. She was having a lot of trouble, uh, you know, really getting the podcasts up and being able to uh, keep consistent because she does have a lot going on in her life, you know, be, between uh, work and school and a family and so on and so forth. Uh, but what you do see in Jerry that you, you know, you and I, you know, uh, we eventually struggled with it. But the one thing that we saw in, in Jerry, and I think still see, is that she has the uh, perseverance to keep on pushing through, mm-hmm. no matter how tough it got. You know, and I'm proud of her for that because she did come a long way in such a short time. You know, it's only been. Well, it's been about a year or so since she really got in, you know, trying to get into it and stuff. Uh, and we have her now on the network, which is great. You know, I'm glad to have her here. And she did struggle at first wondering whether or not she could even do uh, <clears throat> every other week. Because I think at one point she wanted to do like once a month or something like that. Right. And that was something that was off the table. And we said, no, we can't do that. Uh, but she came back with every other week. And that was something you and I were completely fine with. And eventually, hopefully, she'll work her way into doing every week. Uh, you know, and of course, no rush, Jerry. No rush at all. Take your time. Get things done. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, I think she had she has a lot of this, had a lot of the same issues that you and I had. You know? and, and, and the same thing that uh, Scott and Heidi brought up and the same thing Jim brought up. You know, they, they, she had these issues with uh, worrying about what people think of her, what people might say, uh, whether or not she can stick to a topic for an entire hour, whether she was consistent and so on and so forth. Yeah. And so, folks, you can see that it's just, that's consistent in the podcast community. You're always going to have this problem. You're always going to have these fears. And again, the only way f- to get past it is to go straight through it. You can't go around. There are no shortcut, shortcuts. It's just going right through the mud and dirt. Yeah, on the other end, you're going to end up messy, but you're going to come out victorious. Uh, so that's just something to keep your mind on, keep focused on. Uh, I do want to say thank you to Jerry as well for saying such nice things about us, <laughs> helping her. Appreciate that. And, of course, throwing out the PTRN, uh, you know, calling for folks to join us if they like. Yeah. Not that there won't be certain strenuous tests <laughs> that people have to go through to get on to such a amazing and top end network like our own. I mean, you and I have been through the ringer for the past eight years. Yeah. <laughs> That's the only reason we're even on the network. Otherwise, we would have made a network and someone else would have took it over. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of the problems with with networks, which yes, I want to make money with with the show and the network, but these people are driving towards that where I'm like, meh, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm still going to keep doing what I'm doing right here. So, uh, yeah, I, I agree, Jerry. Thank you for, for the great words. And a lot of the stuff that she had discussed, both Eric and I were encouraging her, like when she was doing just her herself at first when she started again, after leaving Deception Detection Radio, and uh, she would just, like, zoom, like, non, like, <laughs> words that I didn't even realize they could fly out that fast from somebody's mouth. <laughs> and I'm like, Jerry, I mean, I'm- <laughs> slow down. You, you have a great story, but it was very hard to listen to it because you were just going way uh, too fast. Yeah, and- I mean, I agree. I'm not going to lie. There are times where I was like, oh, my gosh, I can't do it. No more. I got to pause. Got to pause. <laughs> Look outside and watch a bird fly slower. <laughs> yeah. And so props to you for learning how to slow yourself down because it can be a challenge. And a lot of it probably had to do with nerves, too. And she was doing it by herself compared to having oh, yeah. a guest on. So hey, yeah. it it was amazing that you have overcome the both the fears that you have done as well as coming so far into keeping consistent being on a network and just keep it keep going every couple of weeks would we want you to come on every week sure absolutely but you do what works best for your your lifestyle i yeah. I luckily have a fiance who every week will either go out 
or sit and do something while I'm doing the show every week. And if, if the support is only every other week, then that's what you work with. Uh, Eric, I'm sure can attest to this, you know, having somebody who supports you in the role that you're doing is crucial in, mm-hmm. in doing podcasting. So Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and all of you know, for those of you who have been listening for a while now, I've taken plenty of time off this past year for, you know, filming uh, different movies and stuff like that. And, you know, it's, it's good to have someone like Justin who's willing to step up and do the show on his own, which he didn't have to. We could have easily canceled the shows as well. Like, we've, we've done it in the past. Where one of us can't do it. We just canceled the show. Right. Um, and, and, of course, you know, I, I get a lot of – I've gotten some – some flack from people about why don't I do the show on my own one time? You know what? Let me put it out there right now. I would do it on my own if I had the equipment and the resources to do it from here, but I don't. Justin has it all. Uh, otherwise, you're just going to be here in a jumbled mess because I don't, I don't know recording very well when it comes to radio stuff. But, um, you know, it's, <clears throat> it, it's a tough thing. You just got to keep focused. Uh, don't worry about what tomorrow holds don't worry about what was said yesterday just focus on the show now that's your focus that's your topic whatever goes goes if it's good great if it's bad that's okay you just keep moving forward you'll have a great show in the end no matter what i guarantee you that uh just do your research that's probably pretty important right all right, folks, we're going to take our second break of the night. You are listening to Paratooth Radio on the Paratooth Radio Network. We will be right back after Justin's Paranormal Headlines. And now, now Paratooth Radio's Paranormal Headlines. Headlines. How's it going, para fans? Justin here with your Paranormal Headlines, and these headlines are from unexplainedmysteries.com. U.S. scientists to grow human organs in pigs. It is hoped that the technique will help to solve the worldwide shortage of human organs for transplant. With waiting lists for some organs stretching back years, a team of scientists at the University of California are working to produce human pig embryos known as chimeras, which could one day be used to custom grow replacement organs using the recipient's own DNA. The process begins by using a technique known as CRISPR gene, editing to remove the DNA from a pig embryo that would enable the fetus to grow a specific organ such as pancreas. This genetic niche is then filled with human-induced pluripotent stem cells, which if all goes to plan, will eventually grow into an actual human organ within the day of the fully grown animal. Our hope is that this pig embryo will develop normally, but the pancreas will be made almost exclusively out of the human cells and could be compatible with a patient for transplantation, said said reproductive biologist and study leader Pablo Ross. The patient receiving the organ wouldn't even need to use immunosuppressants. The organ would be an exact genetic copy of your liver, but a much younger and healthier version, and you would not need to take immunosuppressant drugs, said Professor Walter Lowe. The research, however, has not been without a degree of controversy, with some researchers warning that making a pig more human could represent significant ethical concerns. There are even claims that some of the human cells could migrate to the animal's brain. We think there is very low potential for a human brain to grow, but this is something we will be investigating, said Ross. Explorer finds giant earthworm in rainforest. Entomologist and TV host Phil Torres encountered the four-foot invertebrate during a tropical rainstorm. Finding an earthworm in your garden after it rains is not unusual, but for adventurer Phil Torres, recently, a drive through the Amazon rainforest resulted in an encounter that he will never forget. The enormous animal, which measured around four feet in length, was found crossing the road. Stopping to investigate it as part of his Jungle Diaries YouTube series, Torres captured a series of size 
comparison photographs using his iPhone and was also recorded on film holding the worm up to demonstrate the size of the species compared to common earthworms at home. Even more incredible is the fact that this particular specimen is considered to be relatively small as the species is known to reach lengths of up to 7 feet. That's nearly twice the size of this one. And this has been Justin with your Paranormal Headlines. This was a segment of Parachute Radio's Paranormal Headlines. Welcome back to Paratruth Radio. My name is Eric. And I'm Justin. And we are having a lot of fun. (laughs) 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 If you have any list. Well, we are getting close to the end, but we did have some stuff to finish up with because we did ask our listeners, Mm. which we only got one response from our good friend Jerry, but we asked them, you know, if there's any questions that they had other than what we've already shared about ourselves, uh, or even just paranormal questions in general to, to share with us. But, uh, what we got here is Jerry asks, who inspired you to do radio? If you didn't do radio, what would be another way for you to get your message out? Hmm. Well, no one, ins- you know, Justin inspired me to do radio <laughs> because he said, Eric, let's do a radio show. And I said, OK, boom, inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, obviously, I mean, Jerry, I think you know this, uh, if not through radio, then through film, uh, which obviously I'm already taking that route. But. I want to take it yet another route because, you know, I'm going to just step away from the audio visual media altogether and say, if not for radio or uh, film, I think to get the message out, I'd probably go into books, you know, just writing books and stories about the different topics that we've talked about. Uh, obviously, they had to be expanded significantly, but I think that'd be the, the, the route that I would take. Well, for film, it's what ninety pages equals ninety minutes. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I had a hard enough time trying to get one hundred and fifty pages, and even that's a short book. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, you know us, Jerry. So I, I'm sure you know as well. Uh, if I wasn't doing this uh, to get the word out, I'd be writing. Which, again, as Eric said. I, I am doing both, so um, I, I think that it would j- just be concentrating specifically on writing if I wasn't doing doing the podcast first. So, <laughs> so uh, one other thing I wanted to do before we head out is I'm going to play a clip from the first show of Pair Truth Radio. Okay. Um, we we started sharing some of our shows from Night Stalkers when we were doing Paratruth the S Files. That wasn't working out very well because Eric and I have very limited time to do a show, so uh, doing two shows was not working out, and the the audio was so jumbled when we were doing Night Stalkers it wasn't even funny. So this is our first ever Paratruth radio show. Well, welcome to Paratruth Radio. My name is Justin. And I'm Eric. And uh, if you guys have never heard us before, but you recognize the voice, I should say, if you've never seen our show before but recognize the voices, uh, we've been around for a while, but this is our new and improved show, so let's get started with it. Indeed. How are you doing today? I am fantastical. How about yourself? Uh, fan, well, first of all, fantastical is an odd word to be I made using that. that word, <laughs> so it's a word in my own. <laughs> in your own dictionary, right. right. Uh, you know. <laughs> all right, I'll let that one go then. I'll let it slide this time. 
Um, yeah, let's not make that a normal thing, though, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, things are going well over here. It seems it still seems a little odd doing a show, you know, from two different states. I still kind of miss well, we were in the same room doing the show. <laughs> but maybe this way we won't have as many sound problems as we did. That, <laughs> that's true. You know, for those of you just tuning in who've never heard us before, in the very beginning, uh, what was it, like 2009, I think? 2008, 2009? 2009 is when our first episode aired. And that was here on Blog Talk Radio. We were on here for mm, almost a year, I think, before switching over to uh, CBS Radio. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but when we first started, we had, uh, we had professional microphones. But considering the area we were in, you know, the very high-tech basement of my house, which wasn't very high-tech at all, um, other than the nice microphones, which were nice to look at, <laughs> yeah. but whenever I would talk into my microphone, Justin's microphone would pick up my voice. So you'd always hear, like, double or triple words every time we talked. So you'd hear, like, so today on, well, you know, I'll just say Paratruth, here on Paratruth Radio, 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 <laughs> I'd say, what? What? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it's so annoying. <laughs> well, to give everybody a little bit of education about us, we started on Blog Talk Radio. As Eric said, we went to CBS Radio and then um, kind of split ways and had two separate shows. And now we're back on Blog Talk Radio together again. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm excited for it because I've actually missed Blog Talk Radio a lot. And it's come such a long way since 2009, so... 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 I would like to retract my previous statement of I missed Blog Talk Radio a lot. (laughs) 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 Still great for the people just starting out, because it's free. But, uh... Yeah... (laughs) There's many more avenues to go now compared to when we first started in 2008 as well. Uh, Mm -hmm. But uh, even with that, you know, we were having the very low sounding voices. And, you know, it wasn't until we'd gotten in touch with uh, Justin Fall where he's like, you know, you guys should kind of work more on maybe pre-recorded shows get the get the audio better compared to trying to do live shows and probably one of the best uh pieces of inf- uh, advice that could, could have been given to us because it's improved drastically the, the audio it's a good it's a good thing that i use my telepathic powers to put that in his mind to tell you what to do <laughs> So, yeah, that was the first episode of Paratruth Radio. 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 <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, last thing to to bring up before we cut out for the evening, guys. Uh, we got, got an email from a listener, John. He actually listens on iHeartRadio. And uh, the subject was anxiety attacks. So... He messaged, hey, was listening to a recent show, and one of you had commented about having anxiety attacks and didn't know if it was spiritual or not because it didn't register on your device. I had done deliverance ministry for a couple of years and worked with other ministries as well. I can tell you for a fact that unless you have a or that condition, when they come out of the blue, especially doing what you all did. Yeah, that was a spirit or a demon. Uh, They can come from living people too. In fact, a lot of times they come from the living and watch out who you partner up with. They can hit you hard that way. People, groups, etc. See when you do as I call partner up. It's like a contract, a covenant, if you will, and whatever is on them will come for you. I don't care how strong you think you are. Enjoy listening to you guys, and have a good one. So, I I agree, and 
actually, I, I didn't think I was having an anxiety attack. I, I knew something was grabbing me because I wasn't prone to anxiety attacks mm-hmm. at that time. So uh, did I know what an anxiety attack was? Sure. Did I, I have ever experienced it before? No. Could it have been an anxiety attack due to spirits? Again, sure. But... Could it have been the fact that you looked across the room and saw my handsome face? Yes. But, you know, we'll chalk it up to spirits. Could it have been I was telling something to hurt me? Sure. <laughs> that is another very very good possibility. <laughs> As you guys heard on that episode, I, I did... I, I don't even remember my thinking anymore, even though I said, I just want to make sure it's here. Not... Anywhere in my mind now would I say, hey, come hurt me. I want to know you're here. No, I, I'm good with just, if you're talking on my recorder, that's great. But I'm not going to ask you to hurt me anymore. Uh, as Eric had said on that same episode, you know, we've kind of changed how, maybe it was a different episode. Maybe it was one of the other episodes that we were doing for Ghosts Among Us. But we've changed how we do investigations. Uh I don't think we would ever use the ghost box again. We don't really ask questions. We just turn on the recorder in a haunted location and just kind of talk back and forth to each other. If we catch something, then it's not necessarily uh, in response to a question that we're doing or anything like that. And I, I think that, as I said in one one episode as well, some of the best EVPs have come from nobody asking any questions whatsoever. It's just people bantering back and forth. It's just in response to whatever... Usually the EVP is in response to whatever it is we're doing or talking about on our own. It's like... It's almost like you ignore... I I think a lot of couples would understand this quite well. Uh, When your girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife, or whatever are upset with you, or not upset, maybe they're just busy, and they're ignoring your call, what do you constantly do? Keep texting, keep calling, so on and so forth, right? It's kind of the same thing, I think, in the spirit world. Uh, Demons, they're weird. Uh, Put it that way. Uh, They are weird in a very disturbing way. But... And the reason I say it, say that is because they both want you to know they're there, but they don't want you to know they're there. And sometimes I think the pride gets the upper hand for them. And so they're like, hey, and they say something like they want to get your attention, but they do it in a way that to influence you to believe that it's a human spirit reaching out to you as opposed to a demonic entity. Uh, and again, I know we all know, Justin and I see things a little differently there. Uh, the one thing I do want to mention that our our listener had you know said in his email there uh you do have to be careful with who you partner up with whether it's via the radio show or whether it's going on investigations uh, or whatever it is yes when someone or something is attached to that person it can negatively influence your life or affect your life as well you see the same thing with haunted objects if you believe in haunted objects which to an extent i do believe in haunted objects uh when they come into your life if you bring them into your home guess what you're now negatively afflicted by whatever that object brought with it um and the truth is you yourself don't have any control over it you yourself do not possess the power to cast out or control entities of any sort regardless of what you believe only god has that power and only god in you has that power uh so that's something you have to remember if you want help and you need help call on jesus christ call on the holy spirit to confront this demon and cast it away from you jesus says sometimes the best way to get rid of a demon is through prayer and i would say for those who uh don't understand how to truly do uh 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 an exorcism who don't really know or fully have the uh, relationship with God as they should before doing an exorcism, prayer is the number one best thing to use when fighting the dark enemy. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6 tells it all. It says that the word is the sword of the spirit. The Bible is the sword that we use to defeat the enemy. Whether it's Satan, whether it's his minions, you start spitting the scriptures, you start praying to God, 
that demon's going to leave. Maybe not right today, maybe not tomorrow, but I promise you God will come through in the end. So you got to keep the faith up, keep your trust in him. Trying to do it on your own is only going to get you screwed over. I can guarantee you that. On that note. <laughs> All right, guys, it's time to go. <laughs> All right, folks, that has been the two-year anniversary episode of Paratruth Radio. Uh, Paratruth. Happy birthday to you. 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 Is there any new and upcoming things for you before uh, we head out? Mm, well, in two weeks, I am heading to North Dakota <laughs> for a wedding that I'm the best man in. And I need to come up with a speech, which I'm not going to do because I'm going to do it on the fly. I can do everything else. <laughs> so it'll be that much more fun for both me and you. I and also that much other way. <laughs> All right. Good. Uh, so that's about it. Other than, you know getting the film all set up for film festivals still working on that slowly very slowly because I've been putting it off for a while because I'm tired <laughs> of looking at the movies <laughs> film stuff but hey what about you just wedding coming up and it's coming up really fast so uh, like I said next week folks uh, it's just going to be a episode of one of our guest appearances and I uh, week after that is the show where Eric and I will be together in the same room at the same time you don't know what's going to happen you're, you're going to want to tune into this absolutely yep. so mm-hmm. uh, make sure that uh, you're staying tuned to us on Facebook, Twitter Instagram uh, paratruthradio.com ptrnetwork.com YouTube iTunes, iHeartRadio and any other podcasting software or app that you choose to use i do encourage you guys to follow us on spreaker and subscribe on youtube that's the best way to know when new shows are up or going live and uh you know just follow us on facebook and twitter for any updates as well so all right folks until next week where we will see you same time same channel my name is justin and i'm eric peace If you enjoyed this episode of Paratruth Radio and you would like to listen to it again or are interested in listening to any of our past episodes, then you can listen to them on HD at our website, paratruthradio.com. And you can also find us at Stitcher, Blueberry, TuneIn, iTunes, Spreaker, and YouTube. And of course, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for brand new updates of our show every day.